Hey everyone, this is Manly Bastro, and welcome back to Manhead Rafflesia. Previously, we dated an otaku girl who turned out to be a Maho Shoujo somehow. So we did Ivy, we did Anemone. Well, we're we gonna do everything in reverse, which is actually not how you're supposed to do it because we're getting the other letters after, but it's whatever. I'm doing it in reverse because I'm a hipster. Daffodil. And I'm assuming the top one is the girl on the title screen. Daffodil. A flower brimming with confidence. Prey are ensnared by its cruel beauty. Oh, I'm gonna look forward to this one. Before long at the end of the road, the flower of foolishness will bloom. So the last one was bliss. This is foolishness. So is this one gonna be... I thought Anemone was, uh... The, the confident kind of older woman archetype. This one kind of sounds like it too, but we'll see. Ayume Daffodil, okay. I guess it's a different... The other one was like rich... Kind of like Rich Widow. This one's more of an actual, just normal confident, I guess. A beauty overflowing with talent. Inflaming your foolish desire and curiosity. This character has a pretty face. It's probably those Sephiroth bangs accentuating it. Bringing you to ruin. Now, let the blunt thirsty flower bloom. Well, Joe Sama archetype? Going by the music, I guess she's going to be a socialite or something. Maybe an actress. I walk down the familiar road on the way back from work. Since this music's kind of jazzy, I'm jazzy manly. I'm not like those other Itaros. I'm the cool Itaro. Just ahead is my destination. I'm a regular at this bar. So I think they all are different Itaros, because their backgrounds seem a little different. I entered the bar and sat in my usual seat. I'm always here at this hour. It's my special place. I was... in love. Just when the bar was getting crowded, a woman made her appearance. It's my kind of scene. No, no Chuni Maho Shoujo's or anything like that. Or some weird high school yandere. It's a nice bar. Got a nice piano playing. You be in someone out here and you're like, hey, how you doing? She's like, hey, how you doing? And then be like, you know, like, hey, you like anime? Like, yeah, I like anime. Alright. Two margaritas. For the anime lovers. <laughs> Doesn't quite go like that, but anyway. I just, I just visualized it in my head. All the men were instantly charmed by her perfect figure and clear blue eyes. Her beautiful golden hair swayed across her body. She's an actress, yeah, I told you, called Kordore Ayume. Although she can't be considered famous, she sometimes appears on TV. Like always, my eyes were drawn to her beauty. Suddenly, she came over and started talking to me. Hey, you like anime? Yeah, I like anime. Alright, we're dating now. 
Hey there. Do you mind if I sit next to you? At the sudden turn of events, I was so surprised, I spilled my drink. <laughs> it probably sounded a little more high pitched, though. So. My, my. Are you alright? Sorry for suddenly speaking to you. And as for your drink, that's on me. All the seats are taken except over here. Mind if I sit? Sure they are. See, this Ichiro- Ow, just hit my hand. This Ichiro is, um, he's nice. He's not like the one in the Chuni route. This is gonna be the confident, but actually secretly super embarrassed Ichiro. Please, I don't mind. Thanks. Then I'll take you up on your offer. Barkeep, can you give me the usual? I would like to cheer on just do a normal, I guess a normal VN. Like, no twists, no nothing. Just a normal romance. Like, oh, imagine this, imagine this VN without the twists. It's just normal romance. You, you maybe either the, the, the rich heiress who doesn't want to marry out of no love. You know, that's kind of a little romantic. You have like a, Kind of a romantic kind of runaway, you elope. Or maybe you date the actress. You kind of found out there's some depth to her and stuff over just her looks, you know, like, like, oh, you know, I like the arts and I like, you know, culture and stuff. Like, oh, okay. You know, normal, a normal romance we had. That'd be kind of nice, right? Because the designs are fine, I think. And we'd have this really diverse cast. I'm sorry I'm diverting from the story, but. So you could like, oh, maybe you like otaku tuning girls. Well, you got the tuning girl. Or maybe like this type. Well, you got that type. You know? But no, you know, at the end, we're all gonna die. Ugh. Symbolic for life. The dour-looking bartender nodded and started preparing her cocktail. And you. What would you like? Whiskey. I'm not really a big fan of mojitos. Plus the whiskey would be more expensive in a place like this. I take advantage of that free offer, let me tell ya. You. You're still underage, aren't you? No! Don't get carried away, kid. You can't hide it. I can tell. Your face gives away your age. Bullseye, huh? Don't worry. I won't call the police. It'll just be our little secret. Hmm. Is orange juice all right with you? Give me a cranberry. Don't get me wrong, kid. I wasn't trying to make a fool out of you. That's right. I forgot our introductions. So, what's your name? I see. Itaro, huh? You can call me Ayume. Have you heard of me? Koridori Ayume, that is. Although I'm not very famous. Hmm. Bun, I need your backup. Come here. Bun, give me a save point. Go back to something I was mentioning earlier about just a normal, kind of like the end. Now this is not the same subject matter, but there was actually one pretty decent uh, VN kind of dating sim. It had a decent anime adaptation that covered each individual route. It was a uh, Amegami or something like that. 
But that was still like a high school setting. I would like a an adult setting. I think that'd be interesting. Haven't heard of it. She'd be like, oh, you lied. That makes sense, I suppose. Looks like I still have a long road ahead. Although, if you actually didn't actually hear of her, if you lied and say, oh, I'm a big, big fan, that'd be pretty bad. And by the way, kid. Are you always drinking at this bar? See, so the power move is... Is if you don't know it, then you would say, oh, I've never heard of it, but you would, like, lead that into something else to be inquisitive, right? Which our main character won't do, because it's Itaro. You like it here. I was hoping to see you? But we just said we'd never heard of it. Eh, let's be contradictory. Eh, what's gonna be more f This might be funnier. <laughs> How cheeky of you. Even if you tease his older sister, Nei-san, you won't get anything, you know. Listen, I came here for free whiskey. And I'm not leaving without free whiskey. The woman who I had a crush on for the longest time. I can't believe I'm chatting with her right now. I was so moved. My head was a blank. And I didn't know what to talk about. Even so, this dreamlike time flew by quickly. Bye. It's already this late. Well then, I must take my leave. Shall we meet again, my lovely boy? How old am I? Ben. As usual, I went to work. As usual, I went to the bar. As usual, I drank while looking wistfully towards Kuridori Ayumi. What are we drinking there every time we go, if we can't drink alcohol? But today was not a usual day. I don't know, maybe we're just lying? Although I spilled my drink, it honestly didn't matter. Because someone like me was able to have a conversation with her. Just being able to talk with the woman I longed for was enough to make my heart sore. I couldn't suppress my excitement and went to bed still in high spirits. Kuridori Ayume. So beautiful. And not just her appearance. Her voice, too. Nice and deep. Those long and beautiful golden locks that smelled like a sweet flower. My heart was racing so fast, I couldn't recall the taste of my drink at all. I'm in love. Or rather, I've fallen in. Love all over again. Of course, I went to that bar for the sole purpose of seeing her. But if she caught on, she's just going to smile and say, Man, that's so simple, creatures! While having such dumb thoughts, I went to sleep. Ayumi, I want to see you again. This has such a normal start. How are they going to twist this without jumping the shark? Because the other ones, at least it has some... Set up for maybe things are a little weird, like Etro was like unusually mean and stuff. Side of you, me. Try as I might, I can't be special. 
No matter how much effort I put in, no matter how much blood I shed, you just advance past me. Even if I shave years off my life to pursue you. Although I can catch up to you, I can't become your only special person. Am I suited to be by your side? Finally, I've become special to someone. Someone who looks only at me and praises me. A person who thinks I am special. A person who acknowledges me. I'm surrounded by lots of good people. But still, I'm not satisfied. When will I become someone special to you? If you take notes of me, tears will roll down my cheeks. Hmm. If I could smell the way I smelled when I first met you, I could wish for nothing more. I have some ideas what this dialogue could mean, but not nothing that concrete yet. Again tonight, I walked down the familiar road on the way back from work. Just ahead of my destination. I'm a regular at this bar. I entered the bar and sat in my usual seat. I'm always here at this hour. It's my special place. In a while, she'll appear. I was waiting for her. My, my, it's you, boy. We meet again. Sorry about yesterday. For making you go along with my whims. Won't you join me today as well? Button. Oh, I'm glad to hear those words. Are you always by yourself? No. That's fine. I like it that way too. Barkeep. The usual, please. And for me, a whiskey. Give me a nice sun toy proof. Hey, kid. Why do you come here all the time? On the way back from work. That's right. You feel like there'd be more to that sentence? <laughs> oh, I came here to see you. Oh my. How marvelous. <laughs> However, that level of flattery won't work against this big sis. Nay, son. What's bothering you? Dummy. Are you worrying about me? But, have you heard me out? What would you do, I wonder? There's no real reason for it. Things just turned out that way. Nothing worth listening to. You're a very kind person. Person I've only exchanged five lines of dialogue with. Thanks. I got dumped. By my boyfriend. Is it in a boring reason? No, no. I don't like. Hmm. 
I don't quite fully like Ivor Answer, I guess. This one sounds spiteful. Go this one. You know, you're beautiful. My. Are you angry for my sake? Thanks. You really are kind, kid. But even if you tease this big sis, Nae-san, I won't tell you anything. However, thank you. I'm glad to hear it. I feel a little better now. However, it's my fault. I messed up. I'm the one who couldn't match up with him. Was he another celebrity? Hey, wait up. Why are you making such a face? Are you perhaps in love with me? You better cut it out. You fall in love with me. You only have a hard time. Kid. You should stop coming to see me. This will be the last time we meet. Farewell. My boy. My boy. Thanks for listening to my story. I found a little bit of courage again. Once again, I'll try my best. Ayumi went out and left me behind. Her firm determination was unstoppable. This is still relatively normal, though. Like, I don't really see any... bad foreshadowing. Unless the boyfriend's a Yakuza or something and he comes knocking around. Ever since I returned home that night, I had been depressed and spaced out. I became like an empty shell, repeating Ayume's words over and over in my mind. What if we will be the villain this time? More so than usual. This will be the last time we meet. Farewell, my boy. The last time. The last time, she said. What the heck? Even though I was finally able to speak to her, it in the end ain't come to this. While having a headache and a sense of loss, I tried my best to go to sleep. Ayume. Only I knew how many times I cried that night. I consider myself a hard worker. I was born an ordinary person, without any talent to call my own. But that did not mean I had given up on life. Through piling up hard work upon hard work, from there, I was able to catch up to geniuses. I'm aware that my hopes could be crushed at any moment. In that case, I'll just work hard enough to sweat blood. Things too awful to speak about. I wouldn't have done it all. Because I did it. Now I can stand here. Next to you. Someone once said, To be able to work hard 
is also talent. That might be so. I won't give up. Absolutely not. Again tonight, I walk down the familiar road, on the way back from work. Just ahead is my destination. I'm a regular at this bar. I entered the bar and sat in my usual seat. I'm always here at this hour. It's my special place. Ayume was not there. Even after a while, she didn't show up. I wondered if she wouldn't ever come see me again. Ayume, because you were here, I was able to try my best every day. Everything is thanks to you, Ayume. I had always been supported by you. What the heck? Ayume. If you're not here, then I... Side Ayume. Wait, no. Side us, technically. Then it goes Side Ayume. Ayume didn't come today as well. From that time on, I continued to visit the bar every day. I wanted those words to be a lie. I wanted it to be just a mistake. When I least expect it, I'm sure she'll appear at the bar again, just like that. Such convenient thoughts swelled up in my mind. But no, I really understand, she won't appear again. Lying vacantly on the bed, I recall the story from long ago. I don't remember it too clearly, but... At that time I was getting drowned by work, and spacing out in front of my TV at home. Some drama was airing, and there I saw Ayume for the first time. For the TV, Ayume spoke to me. I would never forget that one scene. Don't take your own life. Eventually things will get better. From the day we're born until the day we die, people never stop learning. Maybe this actually is gonna be a piece for out. And it's gonna be more about emotional resolution than any, like, dark twist? Maybe a change of pace, huh? Even if you aren't better than others in anything, you mustn't give up. Because you blame everything on your lack of talent. That's why you're like this now. Even untalented people like us can reach the same heights as those with talent. If we just try. And even if you reach those heights, you must forget to improve yourself. Until the day we die, 
we can do nothing but continue to strive and grow. As for you, you must find the reason you were born. And until the day you finally achieve your life's calling, you aren't allowed to die. You cannot die. Committing suicide is out of the question. Just keep working at it. You can do it. Are we gonna like recite her lines back to her at some point? Huh? That'll be the good ending. Now it's side eye, you may. Button. Ooh. It was just kind of dark. The rain fell. All was silent, apart from the sound of the rain. There was nobody around. Probably, nobody will come. I'm late. Will you forgive me? Abandoning you. I keep moving forward. Erasing from my memory the existence of you who abandoned me. I will only look ahead from now on. This is a real vague story. Never again will I look back. I don't think I am conceding. You have rejected me, that's all. I'm still more than beautiful enough. I don't think I have committed any major sin. You just disappeared by yourself, that's all. I'm quite blameless. Now then, there is a problem. Right here. Who am I waiting for? Foo -foo. I still don't know where this route's going. Is there an X or is there not an X? We seem so, like, disconnected from the actual main storyline. Like, it's actually her story, and we're just here. Even when Ayume wasn't there, I continued to visit the bar. So that I could welcome her whenever she returned. Once again, I walk down the familiar road on the way back from work. Just ahead is my destination. I'm a regular at this bar. Then, in the midst of the falling rain, I saw her. It's like straight out of a drama, isn't it? That familiar blonde hair. It was Ayume. Ayume. Boy. Bozo. Long time no see. Have you been well? Maybe we should get all the rain. Ayume had been crying. There was not a trace left of her usual coolness. She had an expression like a little girl. The strong-willed Ayume that looked as weak as a kitten. I've shown you a miserable side of myself. Ah, uh, it was useless. 
I tried my best, but... Take her to the hotel? Oh, same thing, really. Let's just say take. My. How forceful of you. You sure about this, kid? Taking this pig since who's already mentally weakened in such a place. I might not be able to hold back, you know. <laughs> I don't think you would want to say that. <laughs> I don't mind. <laughs> I see. So you want to become an adult. That's fine. I don't hate that sort of thing. Well then, I'll take a shower first. I've been drenched in the rain after all. I still don't really quite know what's going on with her story. It's gonna be kind of dumped at the end. While Yume was in the shower, I was constantly fidgeting nervously. I was restless. No. I wasn't able to calm down at all. Whether by rolling on the bed, or by turning on TV. While doing that, suddenly, Ayume's bag caught my eye. Oh? Wonder what's inside an adult woman's bag. There's got to be something sexy inside, right? Don't go sniffing around our bag. Maybe it's gonna lead to a twist. But still. Don't do it, Ben! Hmm. Which one's gonna be- maybe this would be the good end? Let's go if I better stop it then. It's whatever. If it's the good end or the bad end, we'll just roll with it. Thanks for waiting. It took a little longer than I thought. Sorry about that. Now, you should take a shower too, boy. Hey kid, do you dislike adult women? <laughs> That's okay. After this, I'm sure you'll like them. What do we even answer? <laughs> I'll make you forget everything. Every man loves breasts, hmm? Does it feel good? Have you calmed down now? Are you feeling aroused now? <laughs> Somehow I feel my heart throbbing too. I know, how about this? What's the twist of the story? Where's it gonna go? Mm -mm. Using my favorite handcuffs and rope. I'm gonna bind your hands and feet now. You just carry these around in your bag? Like this, alright. Foo foo. I love this kind of play. What? Okay, time for the real action. Where should I begin? Don't tell me. Yes, you're in a chair on game. Couldn't just have a nice romance. It can't just be some thing where someone like is trying to start their career and stuff is conflicted about past relationships. No, they gotta bring out the knife. 
Do you get the point of these stories yet? Am I cutting fruit here? What do you mean? It's a scalpel, of course. Have you never seen one before? Isn't it great? Been playing like so. Better not forget to bring this. I'm hoping you just have like a cutting fetish. If I didn't grab for my struggling form, Ayumi nonchalantly took up the scalpel and brought it against my stomach. They're so random. It's so random! I'm quite good at these sorts of things. It surprises even myself. Kid, are you scared too? You're staring at me with such eyes. Don't you think you're being cruel? Without knowing anything about me, you go and say that you love me. But the moment you realize my hobby is just a little different, you try to leave me. I mean, at first you were just waiting for the chance to get close to me, right? Men really are stupid. I've got to laugh. They're so simple-minded. So, so random. Well, it's a corpse party. Look how pretty it is. So fascinating to look at. Does it hurt? It hurts, doesn't it? Of course it does. Look, it's your... Uh oh But hey, kid. I've been looking forward to seeing that face of yours. Did you think it's already over? Not yet. There's still a lot more to look forward to. Fufu. Such a painful expression. How wonderful. Surely I was born for the sake of seeing such a face. I love you. I love you just the way you are now, boy. Such a cute person. It came out of nowhere. Hey, kid. Let's hear your thoughts. They might be your last words, after all. The boy who adored and hoped to do naughty things with this cool big sis. How is he feeling now that his precious organs are being pulled out? This reminds me... What was it? Was it Audition? Or something? There was a... There was definitely that series of kind of basically torture porn. Almost beating some SME kind of horror movies. This boy has come to the end of his short and meaningless life. In his final, final moments, what does he have to say? Anime. I want to hear it. Please let me hear it. Anime. It'd only be boring. Yeah, that's right. How's it feel? It's mundane. Hmm. <laughs> Am I being too conceited? You might be right. Generally speaking, it's just as you say. Long before I met you, boy, something already cracked inside me. But you know, this ending is quite out of ordinary, don't you think? If I say so myself, this is quite an appropriate ending for someone who shuts themselves in their shell. Don't you think so? Rather than walking the road decided by society, we should all walk our own road. That way is better. If somebody tried, they would realize it. Humans are born just to die. In this world, people are born, fall in love, marry, give birth to children, raise them, and in the end, die in obscurity. As for me, walking on a path that's already decided is something I just can't do. I'll be true to myself till the very end. So, I've decided. I won't hold back from the things I like. I'll do what I want, whatever I set out to do. I'll bring it to fruition. This happiness I've found, I'd like to share it with the world. It doesn't matter if nobody understands. Yeah, I won't let anyone get in my way.
All right, so she might have cut out her organs amongst other things. But she's still probably the best one of the lot so far, okay? While well, my consciousness was still here. The scenery was gradually getting darker. My eyes were growing hazy. It's very, very cold. While I was listening to Ayume's excited voice, Without any strength left, I waited my final moments. Happy End! I know sometimes the twisted endings are the happy ends, but no, not that one. Then what's the what's the bad ending? We run away. Well, I guess I was happy for her, so maybe it is a happy end. Alright. I can go with that logic. Well, at least someone's happy. Hey, Jack and Ripper wannabes gotta enjoy life, too. Huh, it's younger her. The girl was an ordinary girl. 
She wasn't crazy from the beginning. You find out she became Harley Quinn. Me who has nothing, you're too far away. If I could become God, will you turn around to face me? And one day I'll reach you. Maybe that was in English in the original. The girl didn't have any unusual talent. Born to an ordinary family, living in an ordinary house. She lived a very ordinary life. One day, on the way back from school, against her better judgment, she was pulled along by her friend on a detour. Losing her way as it got darker and darker, the girl was completely late. As she hurriedly returned home, Parents are dead? Opening the door, in front of her was silence. Her father, mother, brother, sister, everyone was here. And yet, not a single person moved. Ren, that was the only thing in this house. In that moment, something inside the girl snapped. One bad day, huh? The girl was so shocked she fell down. The girl collapsed. A girl still in the innocence of childhood wasn't able to think about anything. Suddenly, she noticed a bloody business card at her feet. It was the business card of a bar. The girl who lost everything picked up the card, grasping it tightly in those small hands. These hands, without fail. Maybe she just keeps murdering everyone at the bar one by one until she catches the right one. Something silly like that? But he's obviously he's a kid, he can't kind of done the murder. Clear password number three, no. Nope. So that I could think of, like I said, she she was like she grew up thinking out one of these days, I'm gonna kill the guy. So I'm gonna have to kill everyone in that bar one by one, including a kid who had no way would have been old enough or young enough to um basically literally been born to like do this murder. Just a peek should be fine. Inside Ayumi's bag, there wasn't anything unusual for a woman to carry. But further inside, there was something wrapped with a towel. The towel was stained red. Inside was a bloody knife. Run! In my surprise, I dropped the knife on the floor. Kid, what are you doing? Fishing around in a person's belongings. What on earth are you trying to do? Run! So you saw it. That's right. I came to kill. No matter how many times I say it, no one ever listens. Kids who don't listen should be killed, hmm? No? Since it's out of the bag, I can't let you leave now, kid. Maybe he's doomed in both routes. As Ayume said that, she threw the bag at me. I stepped back and avoided it, but my feet trembled. What a dumb kid. If you didn't find out, you could have done some nice things with this big sis. No? Ayumi picked up the knife that fell on the floor and slowly walked in my direction. No matter how much time passes, a kid's still a kid. In the end, just a kid who won't admit his wrongdoing. 
kids who I raised properly disgust me. With an unbearable fear, my legs couldn't stop trembling. My strength left me. I liked Ayumi, that's all. So why, why? Why did it come to this? I'll atone for my sins later. I don't know exactly when, though. Before I could resist, she had backed me into a corner. Her knife was against my neck. Why didn't we grab the knives ourselves? I couldn't move a muscle. Humans are creatures that have to sin in order to live. There's no such thing as a sinless person. Even you are full of sin. Atone for your own sins. Man, this Ichiro got a rough start. Ben! Bannon. A daffodil stained with fresh blood. I guess this is a bad end because we don't realize our true nature. We get killed too fast. And then the happy end, we get killed a little slower, but in a more torturous way. Because it's a happy end for somebody. <laughs> Maybe the flower bed epilogues can explain some things. I don't know.